Hi, my name is Dave and I'm here to teach you how to do some PVC pipe bending. If you look in the background, you can see that I've uh, done four already and I'm getting ready to work on my fifth and final one. So uh, I made a jig to hold these bows the way I want them and uh, before I put the pipe on the jig, I had to glue them together. I'll, I'll show you that over here now. Here's the pipes that are already glued up. I have an angle, a coupler, uh, about 90 inches of PVC and I have the same kind of uh, fittings on the other end and what they're going to do is they're going to engage these uprights so this uh, has to be symmetrical so what I'm going to do now is bring this over to my my jig that I built and this is an old table with some chunks of 2 by 4 uh, strategically placed that's going to hold this thing in you'll see there's a hole right there I'll explain that in a minute uh, and these rulers, uh, just hold it up a little bit off the table so uh, when I apply the heat, it just stays on the pipe and it doesn't get transferred to the table. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is I have to engage the very beginning of this in there. And I'm going to have to put the camera down a second to get this started. So hold on a second. It's a very tight fit. And there we go, I got it started. Okay, so you can see that it's in the, the start, it's in these blocks. Now as I go around, I have to push it down. This is a little awkward to film. There we go. Okay, you can see how I'm, I'm in, in these, and I gotta come all the way around. This, uh, it takes a lot of force to bend this pipe. I'll do some more here. There we go. Okay, so now I'm, I'm in this jig all the way. So uh, this slot simulates uh, the position of one of the uprights. And the measurement from the center of this over to the other one is uh, 89 and a half inches. So that's center to center mounting distance. And what I did was I, uh, when I first built this, I put the pipe in without any of these blocks. It just found its natural curve. And then I butted these two by th three chunks up against it and screwed them in. Uh, you can see that this is up a little higher. This is so that the heat from the pipe doesn't transfer to the table and kind of wick it away. And also, it's the same thickness as these, this coupler. So if you look down, the, the height, this extra height here is equal to this thickness. So this pipe is sitting nice and flat and it's not going to be twisted at all. So the key now, you want to know what this hole is for. Well, that's so I can insert a funnel and put boiling water in this pipe. So what I ought to need to do with this table, first of all, is I got to stand it up. So I have a level on this so that when I, when I tilt it down, uh, let me come around here. You see this level, it's just about level. So this means that the when I put the water in, it's going to fill this thing up evenly and it's not going to favor one end or the other. So now I have to uh, clamp this up and put the funnel on. Hold on, I'll show you that. Okay, so I got this clamped in now. You can see this, this is just retaining this so it doesn't fall out. My first one, I actually had this up over this piece here and because it was sticking up a little bit, it squished it and ovalized it and then I had to play around with it to get it to fit. Uh, so anytime you're clamping the PVC, don't clamp a higher surface that'll interrupt the, uh, the the mating surface. I also clamped a funnel and I put a screw here so this funnel doesn't flop around because we're dealing with boiling water at 220 degree, 212 I think it is, yeah. Um, PVC pipe ideally should be bent at 170, that's what I read on the internet. Uh, but 220 is good because I figure as soon as I pour this hot water in there the cooler pipe's going to wick some of that heat away and I'll end up close to 170. Key is I'm restraining it completely so this thing can't get, can't do anything funny. Uh, here's the other end, so when I pour the water into the other end, I also got a hole here. Uh, when this pipe fills up, you'll start to see water coming out of here. So then I know the whole thing is filled up. So key, key here is to do this in an in in area where you won't get burnt or spill hot water on anybody. I'm going to go in the house and get the water. Uh, Something to keep in mind is if you got a cat, get the cat in a different room so it doesn't walk between your legs and trip you and have you spill hot water all over yourself. Wear gloves. Uh, just be very careful. Uh, I'm going to put this down. I'll go with Okay, I brought out my boiling water. Um, now I'm going to use a smaller pan. 
and I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to pour it in. So I'm just going to keep doing this till this pipe fills up and I start getting water coming out of the ends. And you can feel it when it's just about there, you'll get that watery uh, acoustic that's coming to the top. Okay, so I got water coming out of the ends. Now, uh, you want to look at the back of this thing. I use some screws to hold it in. So if you're using longer screws, just be careful that you're aware that these are sticking out and they could stab you in the knee. Uh, but uh, just use an old table, some chunks of wood. Uh, you pretty much got to, the first one you do is your experimental part. So I would say if you got to make, I had to make five of these. I should have uh, had enough materials for six in case I messed one up. But it turned out I, I was able to recover from that one that ovalized the end. So once again, I got the level. The table is sitting level. So this means the water is going to fill the pipe up equally. So what I do is I set a timer for about 15 minutes. Just let this, this sit, and sometimes you can hear it creaking as it adjusts. Uh, the pipe is very warm. Uh, it, it's, it's not burning hot, um, but it's holding it. The, this pipe gets very soft. If I just take this off right now, it would be like spaghetti. So I'm going to wait 15 minutes, and then what I'm going to do is knock the table over, get the hot water out, and then I'm going to take this, uh, this gallon of cold water and pour it in there next, and that will uh, cool everything off and set the form. So, uh, 15 minutes, I'll be right back. This is sitting about 15 minutes. I took the uh, clamps and the funnel off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this table over so that I can drain the water out of the pipe. So I just tip it up like this. You can see the water kind of ran out of both ends here. Ugh. All right, put the table back up. There we go. Now we're back up here. Oh, this came out. So before you put the cold water in, make sure it doesn't come out of the form. Uh, I got my cold water. I already took the funnel off, but I can just shove it back on. Okay, this is a little awkward on the filming aspect, but uh, here we go. So now I'm putting the cold water in there, and this is still in the form. So I just keep filling it up. The water comes out the ends. There we go. So I know I'm full. Take this out of the way. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to just let this sit for about five minutes, cool off. Uh, that'll lock this, the uh, form in, and then I'm going to yank this thing off the form, and you'll see uh, how nicely this works. Okay, five minutes is up. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull this thing out of the form. And uh, let all the water out. Now you can see, I'm going to lay this on the ground. Perfect. So it, it uh, kept the, the shape that I wanted it to exactly. And now I'm going to go put it on the uh, canopy frame. Here's the end result. I made five frames on my jig. And now I have uh, a curved roof. So when I put my tarpaulin over this, uh, my raft here, uh, the water can drain if it rains out. Last year I had a flat roof and the water collected and uh, in a, in a, it practically collapsed this whole frame. So now that this is round, the water will be able to shed. I can uh, leave the uh, cover on overnight and if it rains out, no, no worries. Uh, I still have to make some height adjustments. Some of the uprights got to be uh, uh, cut down about a foot. I got a little extra height there because the bows were taller than the flat roof. Um, but this is a much, much better arrangement here's some final food for thought this is the engagement of flan um part and the the two what happened on one of them was this got uh ovalized because i had clamped on it and uh what i was able to do was take a heat gun and kind of stick something in there and, and open it back up and make it round again it got it close but no it wasn't exactly a perfect fit so what i did is i was able to open it up even more with uh, what I did was I took a piece of sandpaper and see how I put it on here so it was just a little piece of it and I was able to work it in there 
this is awkward filming by myself. But what I would do here, uh, let's see if I can show this, is I was able to engage this in here and kind of run it back and forth and just sand this a little bit bigger and get it smooth because there's like a little rough edge here. And that, that's, that made the fit even better. So uh, don't fret if you squish something, use a heat gun and pr pr you know work it back open with something. I took another pipe and shoved it in there to make it round. Uh, but it, it's, it's got memory so when you pull it apart it's gonna spring a little bit back. Just take a little sandpaper, clean it up, make it smooth and uh, you can recover that way. It's always easier to just take a little more material off than it is to try and bend it and force it. Uh, it's kind of like whittling. You got to kind of work at it to get the fit you want. And uh, that's just a little tip. Uh, another thing is PVC pipe. Uh, with, they're very easy to work with, very easy to cut with common tools. A uh, 10 foot section of this stuff is about three, four dollars. Where if I use metal conduit, it's close to 10 bucks a, a, a section. Um, so plastic's much easier to work with. You can use PVC uh, glue, it goes together real quick. If uh, you make a mistake, it's uh, fairly inexpensive to do it over again. You can always cut pieces of pipe out and use couplers to make it back up again. Um, but if, if you wanted to go with steel, I'd say make one out of PVC first to get everything the way you want it. And then you can know what you need to replicate in, in the metal tubing. Uh, when you're out on a boat, uh, a metal canopy is probably bad for lightning strikes. Um, but PVC is uh, does have some static to it, so it probably would, I don't know if it would cause any trouble. Uh, what I had down here are some of the bases that this plugs into. If you use these, um, leave a little air space in there. So when it rains out, this can dry out under here. What I did was I put some washers uh, between this flange, the deck, and to just boost it up a little bit. And underneath the deck is uh, the plywood which is screwed in there in a, in a lot of different places. I actually made some uh, six six mounting holes. There were three big ones for lag screws. But the deck's quarter inch plywood so I had to go easy, use appropriate fasteners. Uh, these I got online uh, for about four dollars each so there's ten of them. So the, the cost isn't too bad for a homemade canopy. This all comes apart the lower rail comes off, then this upper rail comes off, and then these, these bows come off. So everything breaks down, and I can travel with this thing uh, everything.